Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can see it right there. So in case you didn't understand, and then there's probably more than one. There's probably one right there and there. The last video. Okay. So let me freeze this. And for that, folks, go to the last video and try to keep kids off this because I did cuss a lot on this. So just like, you know, how can they lie any much more longer about what's going on? And then, folks, on this, what's getting really interesting is the Amber Alerts, which we're always proud of. But what is really going on? Because there could be parents wanting their kids to be somewhere safe or something like that and then arguing between spouses or something. So I've got a hell of a lot of Amber Alerts. And then what the goofy thing is is how they match up when I flip over and go to Hazmat. So basically, it's just factual data, folks. Sure, looks a lot of matching. That. That's all hazmat flopping, right? And you can go to every little incident and stuff like that. And they got some guy in Colorado they're looking for, and so forth and so on. So you know, if you want to be the super duper citizen cop? I guess go out and put your life in danger for who the hell knows who, because it looks like a bunch of families are squabbling about which way or where the hell they should be at with the kids and stuff. Because everybody kind of knows something's going on. Uh, there's definitely something going on with the sun, okay? So a lot of this stuff here matches up too damn good, okay? And yeah, they'll have description or so forth and so on and so on. You know, most Americans don't call a cop. They take care of business themselves. So next up, we just pop into Nehemiah, and I think it's pretty much either last night or what I saw last night. And you can go to NASA's site, ladies and gentlemen. You go to Photo Gallery, and you go around looking around in there, and they will show you, oh, wow, we got an extra good. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a hologram from up at the sun. Okay, the sun's hello far away. We're at a closeness of all time, but you just saw we had that remnant just like a goddamn photograph. It's so goddamn clear down there, okay? And then, yes, that's the objects that are out in front of the supergiants, and that is proximity. And go to the video, two previous videos, folks. The one just before this one today, and the first one from today. That basically. I was having trouble last night because it got some audio messed up and so forth and so on. And pretty much everybody in the country, pretty much everybody been watching, they know M45 is out there. And you've seen that remnant. It just came by again. Now, that is actually a hologram, ladies and gentlemen, from up in the sun. Okay? It gets basically just like a hand pumping in a tent when you're a kid. And uh, the sun's real flipping hot. And it's a magnifying glass. And then I, got, I love the speed that they have this going at and so forth and so on. And there is stuff, asteroid belts, and so forth and so on, even in front of that Rigel Cantaris, uh, A, B, Proximi Centauri, uh, and then the other names that are in the, in the other video today, folks. So go watch that. They are asteroid mining out there. And as you can see, more than likely, this is asteroid trail. Are you seeing all these flags? Because there would be no other reason other than that, okay? Either that or keeping a track on that black, dark light that you see that's getting resonated from the outer space down. Because they didn't go out and draw a line in... Let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit more. I think I can get that on here. So you can just keep on seeing the action coming, what we've been showing you forever there. There's a dark object that's in front of all those suns and the supergiants. Okay, now there may have be a little bit of a line, but see, no, that's getting reflected down from outer space, ladies and gentlemen. They're starting to figure out that this stuff's out there and it reflects down. Either that or they just haven't figured it out and they haven't heard from Vino yet because that's exactly what the hell is going on. If you're looking at the sun and all this, see, now look at all this terahydrant action. Okay, no, that's just a flag, okay? They got flag markers out there, so don't let that fool you, okay? Now, from before, everything's been real that we've caught, but now they're putting markers up, and I think it's from mining the asteroids that are coming down. But you see out there that that's actually light that's getting propagated down to... to uh, dark light, a line that's getting propagated. They don't like that because it's the truth. It's getting propagated down. So you can keep looking at the video and you can see that, that there is an alley of some kind of light that's getting reflected down. And it's probably a tumbler. There is an object that's been caught uh, by both. Basically there is a telescope that's French or something like that or at least there's French astronomers at it down in uh, I think Chile somewhere. Uh, South America somewhere. And uh, I keep on saying I'm going to show it, but it's just simple fact. You go looking around, go looking at, uh, uh, oh, hell, I'm going to see if I can try to pop up that photo now because I'm talking about it so much. People are going to put very great footage again. And then I think this is from, yeah, the 9th today. So this is fresher from the last yesterday, but yesterday was pretty much the same stuff. It's just hella clear. They are asteroid mining down there. When they put those flags out and go out there, that is something that is laying down asteroids along these flag marks that you see that they got there going along to the right. Okay?
So enough on that. I, you've seen the flags. I don't think I'll just zip in there one more time. Those are flags. And whether it's their marking from distance or what that light is in the curve of whatever the planet is or something. Okay? So something's definitely up. The huts are out like crazy. The scientists are down there. And it is the season. And if you look at historical shots down there, they've not the first time that they've done this. Okay? So they've been studying this for quite a while. And it's getting closer. And that remnant was wild. So I'll try to snap some shots of that. And... Basically, there goes our remnant that's in front of all the stuff that's in the supergiants, okay? And IE, because of the clock, because it is just moving into the daylight now, so that, that earlier when it came by was what we know as the supergiants, okay? And then they're getting light that's getting propagated down to space right there. You even see it more right there. Even in when the snow is coming through, it gets propagated, Okay? So, and then there's asteroids getting dumped out there or something, and they're going out and collecting material that comes down. They probably got metal detectors, noting anytime something hits the ground. And as you know, they go out with the snow graves. I think they scoop up when they have a lot of metal, metal, and they just go out there and suck it up and go in and siphon it, or probably just like gold mining. Okay? So, it's all going on down there. Now, the Sun, Lasco 3, they're even taking the uh, arm off the shot. Okay, I think I even have it live. Let me go to Lasco. I mean, Lasco 2. Okay, so here's Lasco 2, and they don't even have the arm up on Lasco 2. So you can see the remnant and the volcano on it. Either that, or we have a, more than one remnant, but you can get a good size of idea how big that remnant is that I've showed you before in photos. And let me see if I can pop that real fast. Okay, here's the problem. This will make people think that there's a spaceship because you see that flashing up there. That's one of those planets rotating and putting that flash off. And that's what they're out there measuring. Because there is a star cluster right here hanging up, up underneath the time on there. We're getting close to it. And you watch up underneath here, there is a planet. Either that or they're doing something with a, with a satellite down there. Observing the thickness. That might be that new satellite. They had a jet plane that used to go out of the skunk works down in the desert between Cali and Nevada when you go to Vegas the skunk works is out there and watch right up here underneath there they're going to see that laser you're going to see that there right there this is a Casey station you see that so maybe that's that new satellite that they got down there but people will be tricked into thinking that there's uh, spaceships or some damn thing okay either that or something naturally in a star cluster is just like what has been going on at that Japanese volcano I'm going to wait for this to come up, but you'll see that I'm not messing with you at all. I can't. But right there underneath the January, watch that. See that? Blink. 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 All right. Some more discoveries here. And thanks to the big brass balls because they threw that in there. You got your object again, okay? So that's pretty crazy, huh? And we're very proud of uh, everything to do with the, the what's going on with NASA to, to, to scope out the moon. And it's no big deal that we caught them. I mean, why would they want to announce that they're up to it and they didn't have it working? So they knew that it was working before that they said that they hooked up, okay? But the orbit was so damn high that SOHO was able to catch it, okay? That is the god darn. We actually caught the satellite, okay? And basically, more than likely, the moon right there, either that or this is the moon and this is Earth, and then this is another planet that's close to us, okay? So we caught that and busted NASA's balls. Pretty damn good on that, okay? We caught this because they said it had hooked up on this certain time and so forth and so on, and it did. Okay, we caught it. Okay, and that's more than likely a real damn picture, not a goddamn photo, uh, not an artist concept. Okay. Also, first thing that comes to mind, right? You figure Jupiter, right? Forget it. That's Saturn. Okay. They caught that up there. That was one of these pictures there from Cassini. Okay. So a lot of these planets are looking a lot more alike. Okay. And so when you look at Worldwide Telescope. Uh, remember, there's a lot of artist action in there, okay? But that's an actual shot from Cassini, okay? But you got to remember, they also put the color to this, okay? But did they use a color camera on Cassini to get that shot? Maybe that's real. Also, folks, some pictures of the moon got out, and so the idea that I'm going to be showing you what I found on there a long time ago, we have done some damn good scoping on the moon before, okay? So what are they up to now with that satellite, okay? And you can go to NASA's deal, and they'll give you all the telemetry on everything that that satellite's supposed to do, okay? Day to day on the project and maybe they'll let us know if something slips up or goes slower but you can go to NASA's 
uh, actual kind of like worldwide telescope thing that they've got. Look for it on the net, and you can look at what's going on with that two satellite that's connected magnetically that we just showed you the pictures of. That we, that's so hokey. So don't, don't let the great red spot fool you. More than likely, it might a lot do a lot to some weather action that's down in these planets, okay? Because that's from Jupiter, okay? Okay. So don't. Let, and yes, we're ready to walk on some different planets besides the moon, okay? They're going to walk on Mars one of these days, and then they're just going to turn around and tell us they did it and show it to us, okay? They're practicing. This should be it, because this is from NASA, the fastest rotating star. Now, they say 100%. 100% faster spinning than, uh, and there's a nice little door, isn't it? There's way more than one out there, ladies and gentlemen. There's tons of stuff in space, okay? So this is the one that NASA says, but then when we go to the actual site that the uh, thing thing is from, they turn around and tell us that it spins at 300 times faster than our sun, okay? So there's other spinners that we have closer to us now. This is way the hell out. But then again, light travels through space, so it could still, through all the stellar in, in outer space, this NGC 2070, okay, that they've all been looking at, they improved the lens on this. It's 80-meter lens on this telescope. That's humongous, ladies and gentlemen, looking out into space on a clear night, okay? F the BFST, 102, is the fastest rotating star. It includes both sunlight and images wide, and then it goes into the telescope and so forth and so on. So it's spinning at 300 times faster than what we know our sun to spin, okay? And these are some shots from it. Slow down, but this gets kind of boring when you're just looking at stars like that out. In, I mean, we've all seen this stuff. I mean, it's amazing and beautiful, but they're getting in a closer image, okay? So NASA says it only spins like 100. So that's it too. So we got that's how much they've been able to prove that telescope to get into because that's what they were looking at before. And then you'll get the idea of why you should shut up about talking about lightning and volcanoes. <laughs> so anyway, Pinot Black shares more truth, and that's all I did. I just showing you some remnants of atomic bombs that we practiced with when our lots of soldiers got cancer from being too close to radiation when they were doing tests, ladies and gentlemen, because we had to know how far a troop could be away from an atomic bomb blast. What's that look like? Lightning! Whammo! Shazam! Bam! Alright, so it's all out there on the internet. You just got to be stupid enough to know what's stupid. And you'll see that the idea that remnants in space, because it's an x-ray, even at that time when they did that test, showed up in outer space because that was an x-ray, ladies and gentlemen, when they blew that bomb off. And you can see these remnants on the ground and in space and all over. Okay, and the dark light coming down to Earth, even back then. And now we have supergiant's light propagation that lets you see all these objects like this in our airspace because it's out in space, and you see objects like that in these, and I've been showing you around these volcanoes. Okay, so when you get all the bright lights from the supergiants or an atomic bomb, that's what you get. And then we got a lot of rats flying around in space in our uh, atmosphere, and there's the Rush satellite that can. Zoom in on some stuff, and there was some of their computer stuff I was looking at. Just peeking in, you know. Hey, they throw the pictures on the internet, and there's Aurora up in Norway, and then astronomy picture of the day. And I think if I keep going here real fast, and that was Saturn, and there they are. There you go. They're out picking up asteroids down, and I got this right off of NASA's site, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go, out on snowmobiles, uh, picking up uh, meteorites, asteroid material, anything, ladies and gentlemen. Gold, space gold. Sorry about that, space gold. Now, if they got this off of Vesta, because they figured it fell off Vesta, okay, so then maybe we know it illuminates the moon all the time. Because if you cut a rock in half, and then if it just glows that much on the outside, how bright do you think the moon would be if it if we went up there and cut all the rock, rocks in half and flipped them over? The moon would get kind of bright. The moon's not just a bunch of moon dust, ladies and gentlemen. There's rocks up there. And those 800 pounds are missing, and they only took 9,000 pounds through all the space shuttle flights up to the spacecraft up to, yeah, to the space station and back, okay? 9,000 pounds on all those space shuttles. They take the weight down all the time, folks, on what they carry up, 9,000 pounds. And they told us on the Apollo missions they brought 800 pounds of rocks back, and they're missing magically. So what the hell's going on with that? I don't know. Go ask Kennedy. Oh, that's right. He's dead. Yes, in the video before, Bateglis, they've been looking at Bateglis for quite a while, okay? It's huge. Nine to ten times bigger than the sun. Look at that. Ten math. Yes, playing in space is very easy. There's one of our heroes, okay? Astronaut Dale A. Gardner jumped out of the, one of the spaceships back in 2000-something, or 1996, or something like that, in 1984. 
Hi above Earth. So we've been playing around in space for a long time. The space race is on magnificently, awesomely badass. More space truths if you can handle it.